Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This video is hopefully going to answer the questions that you guys have been asking me over on Instagram. If you don't follow me over there, I'll pop it up on the screen somewhere for you to go check it out because that's where I share the most, the majority of this story that I'm about to offload onto you guys. I've kind of already shared over there on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know like the gist of what's going on. But if you don't, I'm here to explain it to you guys. This video is all about how my mind has changed on consent sur surrounding children being on social media in general, but specifically YouTube in my case, because I am, you know, I, I have 13 and a half, almost thousand subscribers. And I feel like that's a significant amount of people and I'm sharing my life with you guys. And don't get me wrong, I love sharing my life with you guys. And that's it's just, it feels natural to me to do now and recent circumstances or recent things that have happened have kind of changed my outlook on sharing my kids' lives on social media. For those of you who don't know about Micah Stoffer and the situation that is going on surrounding her, that situation has put family vloggers under a microscope and family vloggers are having their videos looked at very closely as to what's appropriate based on what people think is appropriate. So it's kind of changed my mind. If, if you don't know the Microsoft situation, I'll, I don't want this whole video to be about it, but I will tell you like the gist of what happened. Micah Stoffer and her husband adopted a little boy from China a few years ago. I think they had him for about three or four years. And he had severe disabilities, like mental disabilities, and they were completely aware of this when they adopted him. They had around 7,000 subscribers before they started the adoption process. So they were a very small channel. They were a very small family vlogging channel. And then their subscribers grew and grew during the adoption process because that was the trend at the time. They adopted this little boy, shared every aspect of his life on social media, his meltdowns, his disabilities, like his, just like everything to do with him. And the channel grew to the point where they had about 750,000 subscribers, somewhere around there, which is huge. So they were obviously making a lot of money um, from these views that they were getting because of the adoption that happened. They bought a new house, they bought new cars, they're, you know, making millions of dollars basically off this little boy and what he's done for their channel. And then they decided that they didn't want him anymore and they gave him back up for adoption after three or four years of having him. And it kind of, it made me really sad to hear that. And it, and the fact that that little boy isn't entitled to any of this money because the laws of uh, like surrounding social media and kids haven't caught up with today's technology. And it's really, really scary to think that our kids are the guinea pigs of sharing your kids on YouTube because we didn't have that around when we were kids. So the ramifications of having your childhood and your life shared on such a public platform is yet to be seen. It hasn't, it's like, this is the first generation that's going through it. So that happened and the fact that she shared her, you know, his most vulnerable moments with the world, regardless of the intent, it opened my eyes to what I've been sharing of Talia's life. And I do share her, you know, tantrums and I do share the hard times and I don't share it for any other reason but to make you guys feel less alone. Like my channel isn't about, it's not a kid's channel, it's a mum's channel, a, a dad's channel, a parent's channel to be able to relate to the struggles of parenthood and kind of see I'm not alone. Like my kids act like that too because I feel like nobody talks about how hard it can be and nobody talks about the hard times of motherhood but in saying that now that this whole Micah Stalper situation has come about it's got me questioning what's really appropriate to share on social media with such a big audience that I <laughs> like tr not trying to upset anyone I don't know these people you know what I mean like I, I love my subscribers and I love the community I've created over here on YouTube but I don't personally know these people so I'm sharing my kids lives and I'm it's got me rethinking that I have already taken the step of going through my old videos and privating some videos that I think portray my kids in a negative light specifically Talia because I've struggled with her the most um, because she's a toddler and it's just a hard age. 
so i've already gone through and privated some videos i'm yet to go through properly and have a look i'm not going to private all of my videos my whole channel isn't going to disappear that's not what's happening here what's happening is my channel is going to kind of shift its focus and it's not going to be like a family vlogging channel anymore I've recently made the decision to not vlog my kids anymore and that doesn't mean they're just going to completely disappear and you're never going to see their faces again. What that means is that my channel is no longer about them. It's no longer about my kids and what they're doing and how they're growing. It, that's not what it's about anymore. So yes, you will still see their faces in the background of shots and if I'm holding my babies while I'm talking to the camera, then you'll see them there. But this, this channel is no longer going to be about them. The ramifications, like I said, in the future is not something that is known yet because it, we haven't got to that point yet. So say Tilly is a teenager and I'm sharing these things she's doing, like breaking the law and like it's a struggle for me because I am open about everything that I have been, open about everything that happens and I share with you guys for the intent of creating community and feeling together and not alone. Who's to say that when she's older and she goes to get a job that someone, her employers aren't going to go through social media and find these things. You know what I mean? It, that's just one instance of something that may affect her in the future. And it's not something that I had considered until Mike Gustafa brought to light what she was sharing with her little boy, which no one even considered to be inappropriate until she gave him up for adoption. But it's really sad that that's what it took for people to open their eyes and be like, what is actually appropriate to share of our children on social media? I originally, when all this happened, up until about a few days ago, I was planning on just completely not having the kids in the vlogs at all, not having their faces, like just like nothing at all. Maybe just like sit down videos and hauls and reviews and things like that. But I love sharing my life with you guys and I do love sharing the struggles of motherhood, but I'm no longer going to be portraying my kids in a negative way or showing them, you know, acting certain ways. I'm not going to be doing that anymore. I don't want consent aside. I don't want to share those things. The consent issue is a whole other thing. I've had people over on Instagram be like, but Lily and Jet can give verbal consent. Yes. They can talk, obviously. They can say, yes, I don't mind being in the videos, but they're seven and 11 and they don't understand the ramifications of having their life, you know, laid out on social media for anyone and everyone to see. They don't understand the ramifications. We don't even understand the ramifications yet as adults because it hasn't happened. This is, you know, our kids are the guinea pigs at this point. So I can't expect a seven and 11 year old to understand the ramifications of having their life broadcast on social media. So that's where that stands. Yes, they can give consent, but they don't really understand and neither do we. So Talia and Evie are obviously, you know, three and eight months old, not able to give consent at all. So it's shifted my focus in my mind, the whole Micah Stalker situation of how inappropriate is it to be sharing my kids on such a public social media platform where I can't control who sees my videos at all. How inappropriate is it to do that? Facebook is a whole other thing and Instagram, like my private Instagram page is a whole other thing as well because that's just friends and family and I have also recently combed through my Facebook and I've combed through my Instagram to kind of weed out people that I don't know in person. So that is going to be, <laughs> that's where I'm gonna share the majority of, you know, the personal, photos that I don't particularly want people that I don't know and that I can't control to see if that makes sense. Evie and Talia both have an Instagram page and up until this point they've been you know public and I've been adding people that I don't know and I've changed that now. I've set both of their, their Instagrams to private and I've removed anyone that I don't know in real life and that I'm not you know close friends and family with. So if you notice that, you know, Tilia and Evie have disappeared off your Instagram, don't like, don't feel like I'm targeting you. It's just what I've done and what I've chosen to do. 
and then when they're old enough I can hand the Instagram page over and be like this is your Instagram from when you're a baby do what you wish like it's your page and I'd hate to do that and they'd be like who are these like hundreds of people that I don't even know that have watched these you know vulnerable moments of vulnerable photos of me growing up I don't want that so and it's huge because that's what my life has been about that's what my channel has been about sharing these intimate private moments and sharing them with you guys. That's what it's been about. So it's very, it's a very different direction for me to be taking. I think I'm gonna take a step back from vlogging three times a week, which was what I was doing. Does it make sense? Because my life does revolve around my kids. It doesn't make sense to be vlogging as often when I have my kids all the time. I will still vlog here and there, but it's not going to be like it was before. It's not going to be about the kids. I will still share hard moments with you guys. I will still be as open and transparent as I can be while being respectful to my kids and their privacy. I hope that makes sense and I hope you guys understand. Yes, I love the community I, create, I have created and yes, I love sharing those moments and hearing the feedback from you guys of thank you for sharing this, now I feel less alone. I really, really love that and that's what keeps me going and sharing these moments, but it's not worth the expense of my kids' privacy and my kids' consent, which makes so much sense when I say it now and I can't believe I've never considered it until the whole Micah Stalker situation came out and I feel like a terrible person and I feel like a terrible mother, but you live and you learn and you move forward and you, you, you change direction if you're not happy with where things are going. So that's what I'm doing and keeping in mind that my kids are probably gonna watch these videos when they're older. And that's something that I never really sat down and thought about. I had been, I mean, I knew it was a possibility and I know that's probably gonna happen, but I never really sat down and thought about it. How would I feel if my parents shared these moments that I'm sharing with Talia on social media? Um, even like the potty training and things like that, which seems harmless and, you know, everyone goes through it and it's a hard thing to go through and it, it is good to be able to look on the internet and learn from other mothers when you are potty training your kid but it's such a personal private thing <sighs> how would i feel if my potty training experience as a child were shared on a social media platform for everybody to see, or anybody to see and there are some pretty crappy people out there so i've made the decision to not like i said i'm not going to base my videos around my kids anymore you will still see their faces in passing and if i'm holding a child but I'm no longer going to be portraying them in a negative light. It doesn't mean that I'm hiding things from you guys or I'm being fake because that is completely the opposite of the type of person that I am. It just means I'm respecting my children's privacy from this point onwards. <laughs> I, yeah, like I said, I feel terrible for not considering this earlier. Um, Micah Stoffer has really changed a lot of channels and a lot of people's frame of mind when it comes to family vlogging. I've had a lot of people on Instagram reach out to me and go, why are all of these family vloggers pulling out of vlogs all of a sudden? I didn't even realize that, personally, I didn't even realize that other family vloggers are doing it. I thought it was just something that had affected me in such a big way that I made this drastic choice to change how my channel works and what I film and what I share. I thought it was just personal to me. I didn't realize that other vloggers felt the same way and that it was because of the whole Micah Stalker situation. <sighs> so I'm sorry that all of a sudden, you know, all of these channels that you've loved and, you know, grown with and watched their kids grow and things like that, I'm sorry that they're changing and I'm sorry that you're going to miss out on things that you were previously able to watch. But it's a bigger picture. It's not a, it's a bigger picture and the kids are what's important in in this scenario because that's all that matters without the kids nothing matters i hope this video makes sense i hope i articulated my words properly because there's i mean there's a lot of feelings involved there's a lot of touchy subjects such as consent and things like that that i hope i got my point across and i hope i'm not upsetting any of you guys it's got nothing to do with you like no one upset me no one no one in like my community has upset me and brought this decision to me I asked over on Instagram any questions that you guys guys have so that I can answer them in this video and it was literally just the same question over and over and over again why suddenly have you changed your mind like what has sparked this what has made you decide this 
and that that is it the mica stormer situation is what has made me really sit down and think about what i'm sharing on such a public social media platform for me i am a grown adult and i can obviously give myself consent i'm the one filming and editing these videos so i don't mind sharing my personal life and like personal details about my life but when it comes to my kids that's their life and they're entitled to be able to pick and choose what is shared on social media and they're way too young at this point to do that even at lily's age and she's 11. i hope you guys understand that it is going to change from here um i'm not going to disappear off youtube i am going to take a step back while i kind of regather my thoughts and figure out what my channel is going to do from here um i think i'm going to do more like hauls and shop with me's and um review videos like product reviews view videos and more sit down chatty videos like mukbangs and q a's and just like videos that don't have don't revolve around my kids i really hope we can have a discussion about this in the comment section of this video please let me know how you feel about it whether you think i've got my point across correctly in this video because it is such a it's such a big subject and there's so much to cover but this is just i don't even like obviously you can see i don't even have a script i've just sat down and well to you guys <laughs> like it's like word vomit just how i've been feeling the last like month or so so i hope that i have said it right let me know in the comments how you feel about the whole consent issue whether you think it's a good thing that is happening all of these movements in all of the family channels that are being responsible and really thinking about their kids and putting them first let me know what you think about that movement personally for me i think it's a really really good movement and i think we're moving in the right direction in protecting our children let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments thank you so much for watching i will be putting more content out in the future it's just going to be different and please bear with me while i find my feet in this new direction that my channel is taking because i'm not it's not black and white to me right now it's not i don't know exactly what i'm going to be doing i don't have videos planned like i don't have that right now i'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that what i've done for the last few years is just no longer going to be happening and not only that but all of the work that i've put into it is going to be backtracked i'm going to go through my old videos and comb through them and it's gonna it's gonna be processed it's gonna take a while but i'm gonna remove some videos that i just don't feel are appropriate i've already done that i've picked the videos that are quite obviously inappropriate to share like actually having meltdowns and things like that but it's going to be a process of removing the things that i don't think is appropriate to share on a social media platform with my kids anyway i'm gonna stop bubbling on because i feel like i'm repeating myself thank you so, so much for watching don't forget to subscribe below if you want to follow this journey that i don't even know where it's going at this point give this video a thumbs up if you liked it let's start the consent conversation in the um, comments of this video so that we can get talking about it and i will see you guys in the next video whatever that may be